have a sized piece of aluminum in my vice jaws. It's a Harbor Freight mill. I have it sitting on parallels and I'm going to be using this eighth inch pen mill to make some slots in it on either side. But before I do anything, I want to make sure that my part is sitting nicely on the parallels. You can see one of them is a little bit loose. So I'm going to seat it. Um, I can't fit my mallet down in there. So I'm just going to use this piece of wood as a spacer. And that seemed to seat pretty nicely. So once you have it properly set up, um, I'm going to be locating the slot using the shank of my end mill. The cutting edge has a diameter of an eighth of an inch, but the shank at the top has a diameter of a quarter inch, and that's what I'll be indicating on. So how I'm going to do it is bring it um, down so that the quarter inch shank um, will be touching my part. And then I'm just going to bring it over until I can feel it touch. Do that a couple times. And then set my indexing over here to zero. So that every time um, the edge of my shank hits the edge of my part, it hits a zero. Now I know that if I bring my um, Z back up, and if I move this two rotations, which is one eighth of an inch, which is the radius of my shank, then that should be directly on the edge of my part. So I'm using my shank like edge finder. Might not be quite as accurate, but um, it's not quite what I'm looking for in this piece. It works well enough for that. Anyway, now I have this edge located. I'm going to do the same thing, but on the fixed jaw. So I'm going to um, back this up to where it was before. Um, oops, wrong direction. So it should still hit at zero. Uh, I'm going to back it up a little bit and this time work in my Y axis. I'm going to come over, uh, bring my Z up until the eighth inch bit clears the parallel. But still, the shank will be hitting my fixed jaw. Set my Z height there. Um, maybe down a little bit more. There we go. So I can touch there a couple times. And it looks like I'm almost hitting on zero. And now I look, uh, looks like I'm indicated in. So if I bring my Z back up and bring this two turns, I should be on the edge of my part or halfway on my vice jaw in that direction. And then if I go two turns here, I should be right there on the corner of my part um, centered above that corner and that will be my origin. I'll use that for locating my slots. Next I'm going to move my end mill so it's halfway in between my jaws. That'll be the starting point of the slot. I'll plunge down, come either direction, plunge down more, and keep going down until all the way through the part. Probably could take it one pass since it's aluminum, but eighth inch bits are easy to break so I'll take it slowly. Anyway, 866 thousandths, um, 886 thousandths down will give me the center of my part, so I will move down that much. I'm down halfway now. I'm going to lock my Y axis down here and then set my X position. I'm going to move this over another sixteenth of an inch in the X direction. That way the edge of my end mill is in line with the edge of my part. 
and then move it over another 236 um, thousandths of an inch or six millimeters. So that's gonna be 3 sixteenths plus another 49 thousandths. Um, lock that position. And as I bring it down, that should be six millimeters from the edge of my part to the edge of my end mill. Now that I have the center of my slot, um, I know that it's going to go up half an inch and down half an inch, so it's an inch long total. I'm just gonna move my starting point um, up eight rotations or half an inch. And bring that back to zero. And that should be the starting point. And then whenever I'm slotting, I'll move it down 16 rotations, which will be one full inch ending right about there. Now I'm going to plunge cut um, and take the pass over, making sure that um, my table is locked and then I will unlock my cross slide. Actually, I'm gonna keep it locked while plunging and then take it off, but while I'm plunging, I have the course locked. I'm going to turn on my spindle and feed down a little bit. I'm going to lock the Z in place and put this um, stopper here just to make sure it's not plunging while I'm cutting and come down an inch. my first pass, it's the full length, um, and now I'm going to just feed down again, this time a little bit more, by unlocking my Z, turning on the spindle, and plunging. Z again and take another pass. second pass, so I'll just keep repeating that until the through. Um, so that I don't have to plunge cut on both sides every time, I'm just going to, while I'm on the side, plunge all the way down so I have a hole there that I can start from. my hole there, plunge down a little bit, and I'm going to take another pass.
this side, I'm gonna do the same plunge that I did on the other side. And this time, we're gonna add a little bit of cutting oil to help with the cut. plunge through. through. We've got a slot in our part now. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So it's all the way through now. Um, you can see the surface finish on the inside isn't too great. There's a couple things that we could have done to improve the cut. First of all, this is a four flute end mill. Oftentimes two flute end mills work better for slotting um, because there's better chip clearance. If we used finishing passes on this, it would also give a better finish. Because our slot width was the same diameter as our end mill, we can only take one pass um, in the X direction. If we're using an eighth inch bit and making a 3 16 slot, then we could do one in the center and move over and take a finish pass and move over this way and take a finish pass. But if the slot's the same diameter or same width as the diameter of your end mill, you can't do any finishing passes. So if you want to get a better slot than this, you can use two fluid use finishing passes. But this works really well for what I'm doing. And I hope that is very informative, um, useful. If you're trying to make your own slots, if it is, don't forget to like and subscribe.